Hey guys, this is part one of a procedural modeling series. We'll go over some procedural modeling techniques and we will in the end have a nice lattice construction asset. Let's start by placing a geometry node, go inside and place a line. Now, this line is going to be our basic spine right now, don't worry about it too much. And a polyframe. Now, set the tangent name to be normal. So right now, if we're going to look at our line and we turn on our normals, we see we have an orientation attribute. But I want to use multiple orientation attributes uh, this video. So we have to go into our uh, display options, go to visualizers and add a marker. Now this marker we're going to be naming forward. And we want the type to be a uh, a marker, then it needs to be a vector, and the attribute needs to be forward. Now, when you have this and you change the change name uh, attribute to forward, we will still see it, and that's what we want. Also, make sure that you have your uh, scale normal set to one because we want the size of our forward and our normal to be exactly the same. Now, let's go over to the right here and let's start with some test geometry. Place down a grid, make sure it's on the XY plane. We want to have only columns. We want to have a size of two or even, well, the size could be a little bit larger, but we will worry about that later. And now let's place down a polyframe. And let's have this our forward attribute. To explain a little bit what we're going to be making, we're going to make a le uh, one lattice segment and I want to show some cool procedural modeling tricks. Now let's add a up vector for now. So place down the point triangle and this up vector of us is going to point in the positive z direction. So add up dot z equals one. No, all right. Now, then I want to place down a blast to delete one part and another blast that deletes the other part. So now we have our two pillars. Between these two pillars, we're going to be uh, constructing a lattice segment. Now let's place down a scatter. Cool thing about the scatter is that if we set it to one, it inherits our attributes. And that's a nice thing. Now let's change the global seed from one of those two and merge those back again. Now place a connect adjacent pieces. The connect adjacent pieces, if you set it from adjacent points, uh, it will basically uh, shoot simple polygons between the points. Now place another polyframe. And this polyframe, we want to have it we wanted to have our correct normal. Now we want to adapt our uh, forward normal to fit to our pillars. And to do that, I'm going to place down a point fob. And in here, place down a bind to get our forward attribute. Make sure it's set to vector. And let's place down a cross. So we're going to take the cross product of the normal and the forward. And we will be doing that again. Make sure that the forward is in top this time. And now we're going to normalize the result. And with a bind export, we are going to export our forward attribute again. Make sure it's set to a vector. All right, now you can see that it's following our line and that's what we want. So if I would be placing down a edit right here and select the second point. You can see that our forward vector is moving nicely along uh, on a right angle with our pillar. And that's exactly what we want. But if we were to right now sweep this, so place down a sweep, 
and a line. Let's make sure the line is nice in the middle. So copy parameter of the length, place it down in the origin and multiply it by minus 0.5. And let's make sure our direction is also in the same uh, way as the origin. Now, if you look at this and we turn on our uh, primitives, if you look at this and we go to our edit, you can see uh, oh, this is not using the forward though anymore. So this is uh, this has a constant width. That's something we like. But uh, if we would right now would change the it from using the normal to our forward vector. So I would place a bind export for our uh, or I would place it down a bind to get our normal to get our forward. Sorry for that. So the two vector and if we would wire this into this into the normal you can see we have our uh, transformed and uh, reoriented uh, connecting line but it gets really skewed the thickness is not constant anymore and that's something I personally don't like I like to have full control over my width and right now it's it's, it's just messy it looks weird it's not a constant line and that's something what I want for this lattice so, how to do this? Place down another point fob. Place down a bind. Get the forward vector again. Make sure you set it to vector, of course. Then place down a dot product. Get the normal and get the forward. And from this value, we want basically to get the inverse. And this is going to be our P scale attribute. You could be, uh, you could be using uh, the scale attribute and scale in one, exactly one dimension, but for now, P scale attribute is uh, easy to use. So let's just use this one. All right, so now if we would have a look at this and we would compare the two of them. You can see that with our new little trick, the thickness is going to be constant everywhere. And that's exactly what we want. And let's make sure our connected JSON piece is uh, can reach long, uh, far enough. So let's turn these two around so we can see the original effect. So this is how the original one, it's just rotating our uh, line segments and you can see we get weird skewing and with this uh, with this little trick And with this little trick, we are sure to maintain a constant width. So now let's copy over the system. And we are going to be creating a little bit of a larger grid. Now make sure it's above our ground plane. So take the Y value and divide it by two. And uh, we are editing it a little bit. So let's resample this by, uh, by segments. And now we want to connect these points. So let's place a add to the geometry, but keep the points. Uh, do it by group, skip every end point, And let's get the points of our resample. This is a little uh, handy trick if you want to connect some points. All right, and now we need to divide this by two and add one to it. Or minus one for the now, this might be a little bit better. Yeah, all right. So this is the first basis of our letter structure.
now place down a car first so we can make sure that our, our initial pillar has a little bit of an inset and let's connect this to our polyframe set the thickness a little bit smaller let's uh, disable those forward vectors for now uh, all right and let's set this to plus one to make sure we don't have those weird side points all right now here we have a little start of our final project you can see it's pretty flexible and well this is about what we want now this is not a very flexible system yet because if we will be rotating our grid right now it seems to work decently but it's it, it's it's finicky we don't really have uh, nice up vectors so right now they follow it but i want my up vector always to point up so this this feels a little bit dangerous so let's first add some up vectors those up vectors we can calculate by using a little simple formula over here we have our forward and we have our normal and we are going to be using our forward make sure it's at the vector never mind we don't want to use forward we want to use our normal and place down a cross right into the bottom and normalize so this is going to be our up vector i don't want it to be the normal so let's place down a bind export set it to up So that's already looking a bit better. Yeah, that's what I want. All right. Now there's one for more thing that I want to do, and that is uh, if you imagine, I'm just gonna place a quick poly wire over here. If you imagine that our initial pillars are standing to the side piece of this lattice construction. And let's give normals to this. Then you don't want these to go through each other, which is happening right now. So these are going through each other. That's not what you want. You want them to stick to the surface nicely. So that's what we will be doing. And for that, first we need to know the centroid of each primitive. So let's place down a point triangle. Let's uh, make an attribute, a vector called prim centroid. And this doesn't, it, it uh, needs to be a primitive triangle. So place down an attribute called uh, prim centroid. This is going to be equal to the position of the primitive. And there you have it. Now, after this, place down an attribute promote with the attribute promote. We're going to set this prim centroid to, from uh, the primitive to the point. And now we are going to dive into a point swap again. So let's go in here. And basically what we will be doing is we're going to take the, the outer point of the forward vector and we are going to compare its distance towards the centroid with the distance it had to its uh, original point. 
and there's always one of those two is always going to be longer and that's going to be the exact opposite of its counterpart and that's important now let's get those attributes in here so place down the bind let's get the forward and and let's get the prim centroid now what we want to compare is this distance with this distance so first we need to get those uh, values now let's place down an add because the original point position plus the forward vector is give me is going to give me this point and i already have this position so now i only need to get a distance node wire in first value and the centroid copy the distance node and directly wire in our point position now one of these is always going to be larger except when they're at the same level but the most important thing is that they are going to point uh, they're, uh, they're going to be at the opposite of each other uh, per line segment so let's compare these set it to greater than and now I want you to place down a switch node because we're going to be multiplying our forward vector with our custom value and place down a negate and these will be going into our switch now place down an add because this is a value we are going to be adding to our initial points and now you can see all the points getting an offset inwards at a, at a distance you can say so for example I could take the wire radius of our polyframe throw it in here And let's make sure this is going into the sweep and let's set the division a little bit higher but yeah you can see it's now uh, connecting way better to our original lines while still maintaining a, a non-skewed shape so this is the basis of uh, what we will be making that was part one if you have enjoyed it make sure to follow us online and for now this was Dokai. bye bye